EMI's former record factory in Hayes, West London, has been lying derelict for years. But in a ramshackle outbuilding, record presses that once immortalised the music of groups such as the Beatles and Pink Floyd are again in full production. The presses are no longer owned by EMI, but by a small independent company called Portal Space Records, which acquired the factory when EMI pulled out of record pressing in 2000. On a grey afternoon in January, one machine was pressing copies of the classic punk album Never Mind the Bollocks, Here's the Sex Pistols, re-released in a special anniversary edition last autumn. Others were stamping out new singles from bands such as The Future Heads and Emperor Machine, bands that are equally at home on MySpace. The plant's general manager is Roy Matthews, who ran EMI's record factory in its glory days and was brought out of retirement by Portal Space's owners to run the new operation in 2001. On a tour of the factory, Roy explains the processes involved in creating a new vinyl record. The vinyl record starts life at the cutting studio where the groove is cut into a soft lacquer disc. This, the groove, of course, contains the uh, signal of the music. This arrives at the factory. There we produce a negative in solid nickel. We call this the master, and that's kept for pretty well forever. In fact, we have some that uh, go back to the early 1900s. The master is then used to produce a reverse again, which is a positive, and we call the mother. From this mother, we can replicate a whole number of negative discs, which are in fact the mould for the record. These are placed in the record press, a 100-tonne hydraulic press. The material, which is PVC, hot and sticky, is placed in the press automatically with two labels. The press closes, steam's injected, and the record is moulded. Then cold water is injected to set the plastic and the press opens, leaving a bright, shiny vinyl record. as much a throwback to a bygone age as vinyl seems to many iPod users. In an age where music can be recorded, distributed, bought and sold without any physical presence, does vinyl really have a future? Well, the, the future of vinyl is uh, very bright. Uh, a whole new generation have discovered it for the first time through the dance renaissance and have learned the warmth of the sound. I can hold a, a, a vinyl record in my hand, admire it. I can look at the sleeve, I can keep it. I can put the sleeve on the bedroom wall and uh, I have some art. I have sleeve notes that I can read without a magnifying glass. And altogether, it's, uh, it's something people like to possess and like to listen to. And for all those reasons, we think it will survive for the foreseeable future. <laughs> 